Hey, it's Sarah Mitchell. I am going to show you how to quickly set up the bubble CPAP systems that we got in the NICU. So the items you're going to have to collect are the the BC151-10. It's a Fisher M. Pikel uh, bubble CPAP system. You're also going to have to grab the Hudson RCI bubble CPAP system. Uh, the reason we got these really is just so we can have that uh, nasal cannula right there, as well as some Velcro that comes inside of the, the cap inside here inside this kit and I'm gonna show you what I mean in a minute so in these systems comes the water canister with the pressure gauge on it the pressure delivery the expiratory bubble CPAP limb this is the uh, to help you pour the water inside it goes right there this is your test elbow the inspiratory limb and the heater you're also gonna have to grab a lure lock and the long green O2 tubing that's in the Pixis in the NICU. All right, so I already have one set up and I'm gonna show you how to do it here. So on the Neopuff pole is where I have this set up right now. These will be next to the beds. And the reason I have it that way is because of the C-clamp back here. That is what holds up the Neopuff. It's the only thing that fits in these CPAP systems. Uh, so when you go to set it up, if the nurses don't want you to take the Neopuff down, put this on a table and tape it down. Uh, if they are okay with it, which they should be, uh, you put it on there and you're gonna have to use the blender that comes with the Neopuff anyway. And the reason that is is because when they order the FIO2, this blender is the only way that we have right now to set the oxygen percentage. So here's how you're gonna set it up. Up a Christmas tree on the high flow side of the blender, you're gonna run the long O2 tubing over to your heater, okay? You'll have the heater on the CIPAP because the CIPAPs have a designated heater and I wasn't approved for any other heaters here, so this is all we got. Uh, these systems can be set up on any system that ha already has a heater on it though, if need be. So that o green O2 tubing goes into the pressure delivery, this white thing. You're, not, you're gonna leave the blue cap on it, you're not gonna take it off. And then you take the inspiratory limb you put on the opposite end of the heater. You're going to plug in all the normal wires that you would see for a ventilator. And the uh, inspiratory limb comes up and it plugs into the Hudson cannula. So this is where the lure lock comes into play. Okay, so the, the Hudson cannulas come with this uh, pressure line. Uh, and it's, I believe it's to read the pressures back on a, a system like the CIPAP but we're not using it. So to plug it up, you can either put the pressure line on there and tie it off, which kind of looks funky, or you can get a lure lock and you can, uh, you can uh, seal the system with a lure lock, okay? So on the opposite end of the cannula, you put the expiratory limb, okay? It just plugs into the elbow and it goes to the water canister. So here's the, the pressure gauge. It just goes up and down, so it reads the pressure below the number. So example, that's six centimeters of water, seven, eight, nine, and so on. The expiratory limb literally just plugs right into this end of it. Okay. To test it, to make sure you have everything sealed and put on correctly, you're gonna set it to 10, meter, 10 centimeters of water. You're gonna fill the water up to this line, and the manual says to fill it up to this line and let it overflow slightly into the overflow. The overflow, you just lift up and it slides out and it has a pour spout on it so you can pour the residual back into the canister so you're not wasting a bunch of water. Uh, obviously this is sterile water, okay? So you can get it out of a, a bag or out of a, one of the jugs. I got it out of the sterile water bag that's flowing into the humidifier. I just took the cap off and I squirted it in there. Okay, so back to testing it. Once you have it all set up, before you put it on a patient, you're gonna take the test elbow. Okay, and you have to take the, uh, the actual cannula off. So I'm gonna set the phone down for a second. Okay, 
So all I did was I plugged the inspiratory and expiratory limbs into this elbow. They only go one way, so you can't mess it up. And the way you test it is you look at your CPAP system. Right now I have it set on the flow way too high. It says to set the flow to one liter a minute. Okay? If you see a steady stream of bubbles coming out of the pressure gauge, then you know that you have your system set up right and that it is sealed and that you will get adequate pressure to the patient. All right. So now I'm going to go into how to hook it up to the, to the infant. And i got to set the phone down again real quick. All right, so I just have a regular SIPAP headgear, and I have the Hudson RCI, the nasal CPAP uh, cannula with the nair going down. Okay. And I take the little side straps underneath, and I hook it around the elbow, and they pull down slightly, and I Velcro it down. Do the same thing on the other side. And you want to set it up so that the, the limbs are coming away from the patient's eyes. You don't want them going directly over the top of them. Okay. So that secures it down by the nose. Uh, it was still a little loose, so I decided to use the Velcro that comes with the other system. So that was the Velcro I was telling you about that's inside of the Hudson system, inside of the cap. You have to cut it long ways so that it's thinner, otherwise it won't fit. And on the cap, the headgear itself, the Velcro sticks. So all I did was I took the one side with the loops and I stuck it to the headgear around the outside of the inspiratory limb. I put it up underneath there for extra security and I did the same thing on the other side with the other piece because I cut it long ways and just hooked it on there, okay? It makes it a whole heck of a lot more secure so the baby can roll their head and everything and it doesn't seem to come off. And it's better than using the old way of doing it, which was using the beanie cap and then safety pins, which I just didn't like putting safety pins near the patient's face, so I tried to come up with a way to do this. And I've showed it to the nurse practitioner, and she uh, she thinks it's uh, she thinks it's really good. So this is the way we're going to do it. So when you set it up and they order a pressure, the doctor's going to order a, a pressure in centimeters of water, and they're going to order an FiO2. Okay, so we're at eight centimeters of water, sixty percent FiO2. And it's going to be up to the RT to decide the flow. If you don't have the flow high enough, it won't bubble. You need to get a good stream of bubbles coming. That, that's too much. Okay. And this, obviously not enough. Okay. Find a good flow. So you have like a rolling boil, and that's the flow you want to have it set at. So on this mannequin patient, it's like nine centimeters of water is adequate. Okay. This will work anywhere between 6 centimeters of water and 15, and it completely depends, the flow depends upon the pressure. So you'll see if I lower the pressure, that same amount of set flow is just way too high. Okay. And this will only go to 3, that's as low as the, the CPAP will go. So if I put it to 5, I have to adjust my flow down to have a good rolling boil like I was stating before. So that's the whole way to set this up. Um, if you have any questions, please email me. Uh, I want to try to use this as a training video, and I want to see how the website works out. So let me uh, know what you guys think. And uh, like I said, if you have questions, let me know. And if this doesn't work out, we'll set up uh, an actual in-service education. But I think this is simple enough for you guys to figure out. So uh, have a good day.